Hey there, everyone. Welcome back to the Empowered Off-Grid Living podcast. I'm your host, Jennifer, and today we've got a very special guest in the studio, Tom. Tom is living completely off-grid with the EG4 6000 XP off-grid inverter, paired with EG4 LLS 48 volt lithium batteries, and he's here to share the ins and outs of the spec sheets for both systems. Tom, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me, Jennifer. I'm excited to dive into the nuts and bolts, literally, of my solar setup. This gear has been a total game changer for my off-grid life. Great, let's start with the 6000 XP inverter. I see the first section is all about AC input data. Let's read it off and break it down. The spec sheet says, nominal AC voltage, 120 to 240 volts AC, L1, L2, and neutral required. Frequency, 5060 hertz. Max continuous AC current, 37.5 amps at 240 volts AC. Max AC input power, 9000 watts. AC bypass, grid, generator. 50 amps. Absolutely. So this part is telling us what the inverter expects to see from an AC source, whether that's the grid or a generator. Nominal AC voltage at 120 slash 240 VAC means this inverter is designed to handle split phase power common in North America. If you're hooking it up to a generator or grid input, it expects two hotlines, L1 and L2, at 120 volts each, plus a neutral. 50 slash 60 hertz means you can configure it to work with either frequency, which is useful if you're in regions with 50 hertz mains. Max continuous AC current. 37.5 amps at 240 volts means the inverter can draw up to 37.5 amps steadily from your AC source for charging batteries or powering loads. Max AC input power. 9,000 watts basically shows how much power you can feed into it at once. AC bypass at 50A means if the inverter is in bypass mode, passing power straight through to loads, it can handle up to 50 amps of current from a backup generator or the grid. Fantastic. So next we've got AC output data, specifically output voltage, 120 slash 240 volts AC. Output frequency, 50 slash 60 hertz. Max continuous output current at 240 volts, 25 amps. Nominal power out, 6 kilowatts. Surge capacity, 12,000 watts for approximately 3.5 seconds or 11,000 watts for approximately 5 seconds. Power factor, 0.99 at full load. Reactive power adjust range, minus 0.8 to plus 0.8. Operating frequency, 50 slash 60 hertz. THD, V. 3%. Switching time, 15 milliseconds at single, 30 milliseconds at parallel. This is where the inverter specs really show us what it can do to power our off-grid household. 120 slash 240 volts AC output means I can run standard North American household appliances, both 120 volt stuff, like lights and smaller appliances, and 240 volt appliances, like well pumps, dryers, or electric ranges. 25A max. Continuous output at 240 volts translates to 6 kilowatts of consistent power delivery. Nominal power output, 6,000 watts is the continuous rating. That's your stable day-to-day -day power. Surge capacity is key for off-grid folks. Some loads, like pumps or AC units, need extra power when they first switch on. The inverter can deliver up to 12,000 watts for around 3.5 seconds or 11,000 watts for about five seconds to handle those startup surges. Power factor at 0.99 means it's very efficient with minimal power lost to inefficiencies. Reactive power adjust is more advanced. In simple terms, if you need to correct the power factor for certain inductive or capacitive loads, you can tweak it. Not everyone uses this, but it's nice to have. THD, total harmonic distortion, Less than 3% means the output power is clean, which is great for electronics. Switching time below 15 milliseconds, single unit, or 30 milliseconds, parallel, means that if your inverter switches from one mode to another, like from grid to battery, your devices shouldn't blink or reset. That's nearly seamless for most electronics. Awesome. Now for the PV input data, the solar side, number of MPPTs, two. 
inputs per MPPT, 1. Max usable input current, 17 amps. Max short circuit input current, 25 amps. DC input voltage range, 100 to 480 volts, DC. Unit startup. Voltage, 100 volts, DC plus or minus 10 volts, DC. MPP operating voltage range, 120 to 385 volts, DC. Nominal MPPT voltage, 320 volts, DC. Maximum utilized solar power, 8,000 watts, 4,000 watts per MPPT. Recommended maximum solar input, 10,000 watts. Here's where you see the real flexibility for solar. Two MPPTs means there are two separate maximum power point tracking channels. Each tracks and optimizes the output from a string of solar panels independently. This is especially helpful if you have panels on different roof angles or partially shaded arrays. The 17 amp max usable input current per MPPT and 25 amp max short circuit help you size your panel strings properly so you don't exceed the inverter's input limits. The DC input voltage range of 100 to 480 volts DC is huge. You can configure your panels in series so the voltage is high, minimizing wire losses. But you need at least 100 volts DC to get the inverter up and running. MPP, maximum power point. Operating voltage range 120 to 385 VDC is where the inverter does its best job finding the sweet spot for power generation. Nominal MPPT voltage, 320 volts DC, is typically the most efficient operating voltage. 8,000 watts of solar can be fully utilized, 4,000 watts per MPPT. You can over-panel slightly to 10,000 watts if you want. Over-paneling just means you'll produce closer to the inverter's max capacity, more consistently, though you won't exceed the 8 kilowatt output limit. That covers the solar side. Now the all-important battery data, type lead acid slash lithium. Max discharge current, 140 amps. Max charge current, 125 amps. Nominal voltage, 48 volts DC. Battery voltage range, 46.4 to 60 volts DC. Lithium or 38.4 to 60 volts DC. Lead acid. Recommended battery capacity per inverter, greater than 200 amp hours. High DC cutoff voltage, 59 volts, DC lithium and 60 volts, DC lead acid, and more details on low DC warning and cutoff voltages. Yes, so it works with both lead acid and lithium chemistries, but lithium is where it really shines. 140 amp max discharge and 125 amp max charge means you can pull or push a substantial amount of current to or from the batteries. This ties into how fast your batteries can charge from solar or AC and how quickly you can power your loads. Nominal 48 volts is pretty standard for modern off-grid and hybrid systems. The voltage ranges listed help the inverter know when to stop charging or cut off loads if the voltage gets too high or too low. They recommend at least 200 amp hours per inverter, so you have enough battery fuel tank to handle loads and surges. Of course, I run 30 kilowatt hours worth of EG4 LLS lithium, so that's 600 amp hours total at 48 volts and that's more than enough to satisfy these requirements. The high DC cutoff and low DC warning settings protect your batteries from damage. The inverter can be configured to alert you or shut down to prevent battery over discharge or overcharge. I see the general data mentions up to 16 units in parallel. That's a lot of power. It is. You can build some serious power plants by paralleling up to 16 of these. That's 96 kilowatts of potential output if you want a small microgrid or big off-grid setup. It also mentions things like dimensions, weight, cooling, and operating temperature range. Just make sure you keep it within 32 to 113 degrees Fahrenheit for best performance. If you live in colder climates, you might need a heated enclosure. Now let's shift over to the battery spec sheet. These are the EG4 LLS 48 volt 100 amp hour batteries you mentioned, right? Right, I've got enough of them to make a 30 kilowatt hour bank, which is six modules of 48 volts, 100 amp hours in parallel. I see. Module operating parameters first. Voltage, 51.2 volts. Capacity, 100 amp hours. Charging voltage, bulk absorb, 
56.8 volts, float 54 volts, SOC cutoff, 20%, recommended. Charging current, 100 amps, max, recommended 30 to 50 amps. Discharging current, 100 amps, max, recommended 90 amps. These are nominally 51.2 volts because each battery is basically 16 lithium cells in series at 3.2 volts per cell. The 100 amp hour capacity means each module stores about 5.12 kilowatt hours, 51.2 volts times 100 amp hours. For charging, they recommend 56.8 volts for bulk or absorb. I set my inverter to about 56.4 to 56.6 volts, so it's slightly under the max, helping prolong battery life. The float voltage is recommended at 54 volts, though with lithium, you don't necessarily have to float them. They recommend cutting off around 20% state of charge to maintain longevity. That means about 80% usable capacity. 100 amp max charging or discharging is the absolute ceiling, but for optimum battery life, they suggest 30 to 50 amp charging and around 90 amp discharging. Next up, environmental parameters. Charging range, 32 degrees Fahrenheit to 113 degrees Fahrenheit. Discharging range, minus 4 degrees Fahrenheit to 122 degrees Fahrenheit. Storage range, minus 4 degrees Fahrenheit to 122 degrees Fahrenheit. Ingress protection, IP20. So you should only charge these above 32 degrees Fahrenheit. Charging lithium batteries below freezing can damage them. You can discharge down to negative 4 degrees Fahrenheit, but it's still best to keep them in a more moderate temperature for longevity. IP20 means they're not waterproof. They're intended for indoor, protected environments, like a server rack or battery shed. The BMS parameters chart is pretty detailed, covering cell voltage protection, module voltage, overcurrent, temperature protection, etc. Right? The battery management system, BMS, is crucial. It monitors each cell, so no cell voltage goes too high, 3.8 volts, or too low, 2.3 volts. It also has overcurrent protection if you try to pull more amps than it's rated for, and short circuit protection if there's a fault. Temperature protection is super important. It'll shut down charging or discharging if temps exceed safe limits. That's peace of mind for off-grid setups. Finally, the general specifications. Maximum units in series. One, i.e. 48 volts nominal. Maximum units in parallel, 64. E-stop function, yes, Dimensions, 6.1 by 19 by 17.4 inches. Weight, 99.6 pounds. Certifications, UL1973, UL9540A. One in series means each pack is built to be a single 48-volt battery. You don't stack them in series for higher voltages. Just parallel them for more capacity. Parallel up to 64 means you could theoretically reach over 300 kilowatt hours in a single battery bank if you wanted to. E-stop is an emergency stop switch, particularly useful in commercial setups for quick shutoff. UL listings are big. UL1973 and UL9540A confirm these batteries meet rigorous safety standards. So Tom, you've been living off-grid with these exact specs. How does it feel day to day? It's been incredible. My 6000 XP inverter handles everything from my water pump to my power tools. The 30 kilowatt hours of EG4 LLS lithium batteries ensure I have enough reserve for a couple of cloudy days without running a generator. Because I sized my solar array close to eight kilowatts, I can recharge pretty quickly when the sun's out. And the closed loop communication between the inverter and batteries means the system automatically optimizes charging. So in practical terms, do you find the surge capacity, battery protection, and all those specs we talked about sufficient for real-life demands? Definitely. I've rarely run into issues. My well pump's inrush current is high, but that 12 kilowatt surge capacity helps big time. The BMS in the batteries keeps them safe, even if the temperature drops overnight in winter. And because the system can handle heavy loads, I can do laundry, run the dishwasher, and watch TV all at once without shutting down. This is super informative, Tom. Thank you so much. Any final words of advice for folks thinking about going off-grid with the EG4 6000 XP and these batteries? Yes, always size your system for your worst case scenario. 
If you're in a cold climate, make sure the batteries stay above freezing and read through every spec, like we did, so you really understand how each figure impacts daily performance. The more you know, the more reliable and efficient your off-grid life will be. There you have it, folks, a comprehensive breakdown of the EG4-6000 XP off-grid inverter and EG4 LL-S 48 volt 100 amp hour server rack batteries. We went line by line to give you the why behind each number. If you found this podcast helpful, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe. And if you're thinking about going off grid or upgrading your existing system, keep an eye on these specs to make the right choice. Thanks again, Tom, for sharing your personal off grid experience. My pleasure, Jennifer. Thanks for having me and happy off grid living to everyone listening. That's it for this episode of Empowered Off Grid Living. If you would like more information on the 6000 XP, the EG4 batteries, or are ready to purchase, be sure to use our link below this video to get your $50 discount. Until next time, stay powered, stay independent, and stay curious. See you soon.